Hey guys, Vladimir here. In my last video, I showed my gingerbread house kit, which was this year's holiday design and 3D print. Now, the cool thing with this model and 3D print is that I designed it and then created a flat pack version of it that you can stuff in an envelope and give it to friends and family, and they get to snap it apart and build this gingerbread house. So as I mentioned before, there were a lot of really valuable Fusion 360 design techniques that I took advantage of in this uh, design that I wanted to do some separate videos to talk about. So today, what I want to do is go over how I turned this model into the sort of flat pack holiday card here. So let's go into that. I'm going to show two different approaches here. The one approach is going to be for those of you who have the free Fusion 360 personal or hobbyist license. And then I'll also cover if you do have the paid license, how you can use the arrange feature that you have access to that makes that workflow even faster. All right, so let's jump right in. I'm gonna to come to back to this design here. So basically I designed it like this. And the important thing here is you'll notice that all these are their separate components, right? So I've got my bottom here, that base, and then the front, and then all the other walls. And so nice thing with that, you know, is the timeline gets neatly uh, organized here. So if I hadn't done that, this is the entire timeline and you can see how a pain it would be to try to find one feature and change it. Um, for example, and then I, if I just activate the left side here, you see the timeline for that. So if I want to make changes, it's really easy to make changes. But the other advantage of designing um, your models in separate components is that you can easily move them around. So for example, if I just drag this, I can kind of move it around like this, right? And if you have bodies, you can't do that. You actually have to go and right click, go to move copy, select your model, and then tell it which object you want to move bodies or components, and then go ahead and move it. So it's, it's a whole bunch of extra clicks that you don't have to do. So let me just put these back together. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually not going to touch this model. And this is really important here because you would hate to mess everything here up and then come back later and realize you need to do a change and you need to see how, for example, maybe the parts come together and then you need to reassemble it. Um, so what we want to do is not touch this. We want to leave this as is. And instead of creating a whole new design or a copy of this, you can take advantage of your derived tool. So the first sort of lesson here in, in this approach is use your derive tool here. Go to create and down to derive. Okay, it's gonna say it wants you to save it, so we'll go ahead and save. And we'll get this dialog box here. Now, I think I will do a more deep lesson into the derive tool, because a lot of features I wanna show, but I don't want this particular video to be just about the derive tool. So I'm just gonna quickly go through um, how it works right now. Uh, with this example. So we can choose to save it in a new design or existing design. I'm going to choose new design, derived objects. I'm going to go with component and just select my top level component. It's going to select everything. If you want parameters to go as well, you can choose uh, parameters from components or favorites. I'm going to go with components here. Click OK. And what Fusion does is it creates a new design here that brings those components from this existing design. The neat thing with that is now I can completely make changes to this without affecting this original design here. Um, but the cool thing with that is if I do decide to go back and make changes to the original designs, those changes can get pushed through to my new design here, or I should call it the derived design. So, okay, now that I have my derived design here, the approach um, you can take here without doing anything really fancy is just uh, taking advantage of your align tool. So your modify align here. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, let me untoggle the visibility of the roof. Uh, I'm gonna do the right and the left roof here. And next what I'm going to do is show my origin and expand it here so I can see my XY plane. It's just gonna make it a lot easier selecting it here than having to try to get through it with other models in the way. Okay, now that I've done that, I'll simply go to modify down to align. I'm just gonna click to select the face that I want to lie flat, click on the XY plane, click okay. And then I'll right click and just keep repeating that. 
Um, so you can see here, uh, I just select anywhere on the face that I want to align with the XY plane, click OK. And I'm just going to do that with each one here. And let's not forget the roof. So we'll bring that in. Again, repeat a line, X, Y, and one more. Whoops, click OK. And we'll do one more here. So, okay, that gets it all flat. And you can see that's pretty quick, you know. Um, I mean, unless you've got hundreds of parts um, that you're dealing with. Um, you know, in, in that case, you may want to get the, the paid uh, license version. But if it's just a few components here, then this works great. And, and now the fact that they're components, right, I can just go ahead and move them. And it can easily just kind of get them uh, arranged how I want them. And so one thing I did here is I created a sketch. Uh, let's uh, select that uh, XY plane again. And we'll go ahead and click Capture Position. I'll create a, a rectangle here. So let's do a two point rectangle. And I know that I want the, this to be uh, five by seven. So I'm in millimeters right now, but that's okay because I can just type uh, five inch as long as I type inch after it, it'll convert it. So five by seven inches here. And now I'll click finish sketch. Oops, let's turn this back around. And now I can just move this these into place to fit how I want them to. Um, so, you know, that's that's how you can approach this. Um, again, with the free Havius license here, um, and without installing any sort of other plugins or anything else, you can just kind of take this approach, get it to, you know, how you want it. I think the way I did it is I, you know, I eventually got this all lined up and left some room on top here that I could write, you know, Merry Christmas or uh, Happy Holidays up here. And I realized, you know what, this didn't actually need to go all the way to seven inches. I can get away with making that shorter. So if I go back to that sketch, what I did was I just kind of removed that dimension here. So let me just delete that. And then I can drag this back a bit to bring it down to just as big as I need it. Then I can always go back to that sketch and then enter a dimension here to lock it in place. So maybe 165. And that's how I got to this part here where I just arranged them. And you can see here I angled the sides here to make this shape look like a, a house. I uh, wrote Merry Christmas on top. And then I'll show in a later video how I um, apply the little tabs here. So, okay, I'm not gonna do all that here, but I just wanted to give you the basic principle. If you do need to flip a model around, in that case, you need to right click, move copy, change this to components. And let's see, place your little widget there and then you can go ahead and flip it 180. So, okay. All right, and then so that's how I got that arranged in a flat manner. Now I wanna show you um, the other way. And this is if you do have the uh, paid license for Fusion 360 or actually if you also have the student license, um, you can do this. Uh, you can go to modify down to arrange. If you only have the hobbyist license, this will be grayed out. So with the arrange tool, I would still first create a derived design because again, I don't want to make changes to this. So again, we go to create, derive, go ahead and save it, click OK. Um, tell it that we're going to go with components here. I'm going to choose my component, click OK and it's gonna open up a new design here. You see it says Untitled 2, there's my, um, my model. And then I'll go to Modify, go down to Arrange, get this dialog box here. Uh, it's gonna have me choose my objects and what you'll wanna do here is do a Shift Select. So I'm gonna choose my first component here, hold Shift, choose my last component. It'll select uh, all the components and I can then go down here. It's gonna have me select a plain sketch or face. Uh, let's go ahead and for this one, let's do the uh, XY plane again. So let me just bring that in and select it here for my origin. And I can go ahead and give it a length and width here. So let's say seven inch by five inch. Uh, offset, that's the height above the, the plane if you want um, a height there uh, to be, uh, if you want it to be offset. Uh, I don't want that because I want it to be flat with the XY plane. 
And then frame width here, um, this is if you want a certain distance off the border, you can enter that. So here we've got four inches and then object spacing, two inches. Object spacing is just the spacing apart from component to component. Um, so you can see if I maybe change this to, uh, let's say five, you see these will move farther apart. So, okay, I'll go back to two. And the nice thing there, you can check auto preview and it'll automatically, you can, you can preview without confirming to see what settings you want here. So, okay, and you also see that uh, that four millimeter border I've got there around. So now if you click okay, there it is. Everything gets quite easily flat packed very quickly. Um, you can see how that saves you the step of having to go to modify down to align and clicking each model and choosing your XY plane. So, you know, if you got like 30 or so parts that you need to do that, then you can see why the uh, arrange feature uh, really would save you a lot of time. If you only have um, like seven, like I do here, not that big of a deal just to use your align tool instead. But okay, so there's that. I wanna show you one more feature here. Uh, so let me undo. So with this arrange tool, let's go back to modify arrange. Uh, choose my models here again. So I'll shift select all my components. And instead of um, plane here, I can go with a sketch. So actually let's cancel out of that. I'm gonna create a sketch on my XY plane. And I'm gonna create a two point rectangle here. So again, I'll just make this five inch by seven inch and finish sketch. Now that I have that sketch, you know, let's go back to arrange, select my components. And for the plane here, I can just select the sketch that I made. Well, obviously if it's too small, it just won't work. Um, it'll, it just won't arrange. It'll tell you, you know, this isn't going to work. Um, but if it does fit, it'll go ahead and arrange them for you. Um, again, so, uh, you know, the rest of the settings are the same. I just wanted to show you that feature that if you already have a designated area, you can just select that uh, area and it'll try to fit those components in there um, by first just creating a sketch. Okay, so that's basically it for this video. I just wanted to show you um, how I went from this 3D model here to creating a flat pack. Um, so just to summarize, first thing, whether you go with just uh, aligning them manually or using your arrange option here, um, you first would want to create a derived uh, model here. So uh, first go to create derive because you may not want to touch this model here. Better to keep this as is and then it'll create a new model, um, bring those designs in there and then you can use, you know, for the free version, your align tool is a, is a great approach to take. If you have the paid version, you can do the arrange feature here. And uh, if you do have the free version, I believe you do see the arrange, it'll just be grayed out. Uh, you won't be able to access it. So, all right, that's it for today, guys. I'll come back. I've got a few more things I want to teach with this model here, but I'll be back in a few days to show you some more uh, valuable design techniques. If you would like to print this model, I have the uh, link to the STL uh, files below. Um, and for my Patreon subscribers, uh, making the Fusion 360 file available to you. So you can come in and change the designs. Um, and the nice thing with this model is that you can use sort of the, the base for anything, really, right? Like uh, right now it's currently a gingerbread house, but it, maybe you want to make it into a little like log cabin or um, I don't know, something completely different. You could just you know, come in and get rid of the snowflakes here in the trees and put your own features. But the nice thing is you have this uh, really solid base here um, for a design that snaps together and it's just really fun to, to build. So uh, yeah, if um, you want the Fusion 360 model, um, consider becoming a, a Patreon. I've got the link below. If you would like to acquire the superpower to be able to design anything you want, make sure to check out my quick start course below to get you up and running with Fusion 360. And of course, if you have any questions with my uh, approach here, go ahead and leave them below. Or if you have any other methods you think uh, um, that would be useful for getting this into becoming this uh, flat pack design here, uh, something I didn't touch on, um, go ahead and leave that in the comments as well. All right, guys, I will see you soon.